Okay. So the TB stuff isn't uh, that different for the than the like the parallelization uh, chapter that we already went through. So basically, TPUs like if your code supports TPUs, that's good for you because then it can it can properly use the TPUs. If it doesn't support TPUs, then it can't use TPUs. That's that's how it, how it goes. So basically, TPUs are very specialized, like accelerators. And basically, if you want to use the TPUs, your pro program needs to know how to like send the calculations to the TPUs. And that's usually done with via these libraries, like CUDA libraries and stuff like that. So basically, like, uh, let's say you have a matrix inversion or something like a plus plus calculation, this linear algebra calculation. Usually, like this uh, code in the CUDA libraries that basically tells how to how to uh, run the same calculation but on a GPU, and your code uh, or the program that you're using needs to like support uh, doing this kind of a thing. So basically, if your pro program supports GPUs, then you can use GPUs. For example, MATLAB has this GPU arrays, Python has this GPU release, Julia has GPU libraries, R has many different GPU libraries. Mm -hmm. uh, like like all of them uh it really depends on whether your code supports it. many uh, like uh, physics simulation softwares can be compiled to use gpus yeah but it, it usually it, it requires that the gpu can support it and if your gpu can uh, like if your code can support it then it's very easy to ask for a gpu you just add this one line so basically our gpus are in in the queue there are these uh, generic resources or grace uh, and and basically they're specified like okay i want this resource when when my code is running and when you specify like okay i, I need this resource uh, you usually say how many how many of them and then you you get the gpus and then the code can utilize them in gpus especially in the cluster side Usually, like like with the parallelization, it's usually not worth the effort of using multiple GPUs unless your program uh, or problem is such that it can actually utilize the multiple GPUs. Because these uh, uh, cluster GPUs are a bit different to the like the GPUs that you have on your normal like uh, workstation. They are much more powerful, uh, but at like you can often end up in a situation where the GPU isn't fully utilized because the problem isn't hard enough. So usually it's not worth the effort to add in like using multiple GPUs unless you you know that your pro program is big like that big enough that it actually needs or can utilize the multiple GPUs. Yeah. Uh, you can also like if you need certain GPU architecture. There are multiple different architectures, for example, in in, uh, in Python. So you can specify, use this corner strength to specify uh, a certain GPU architecture. If you want to, uh, Richard, run hmm. Slurm features on on the so Slurm features will give you the available hmm. different features that we have uh, available. So you can see there that some of them have. GPUs uh, over there in the right, you can see Gres. There's GPUs. Uh, some of them have like these K80s, really old stuff, or P100s, this Pascal generation stuff, or these P100s, which are like a voltage generation, the last generation. Uh, we are getting some Ampere GPUs, the new GPUs, uh, quite soon, but they are delayed currently, that, but we'll get them at some point. So if you want to certain if you need a certain uh, generation of C, uh, GPU you can use this uh, dash dash constraint to specify uh, the GPU generation that you want to you, you can use yeah. so uh, uh, yeah that, that that is about it uh, if you're using some of the most commonly used machine learning frameworks such as, such as TensorFlow or Keras or PyTorch uh, they are all available in the Anaconda module. You don't need to load any CUDA modules or anything like that because the CUDA is in Anaconda as well. Like, but 
uh, if your if your code requires some CUDA libraries or you need to compile your stuff yourself, you need to usually load these CUDA modules or these mo CUDA modules and then compile your code so that it can uh, uh, it can utilize mm -hmm. the CUDA libraries. Yeah. Hmm. So maybe you should run, run yeah. quickly the, the here's a, here's a few examples like how to do like how to run one of the TensorFlow examples for and um, Python examples, but they are very specific for the uh, yeah. For I the guess framework. Because we may as so. well do one of these demos so we can show something. Yeah. And you can see really there's not much about Slurm itself here. So let's see. I will get a file. Mm. You have double widget. Double. Oh. Well, it looked like it still worked anyway. Yeah. Um, module load Anaconda. And now we're doing this without a batch script. We're doing this interactively. Mm. Oh. On other sides, the names of the GPUs, the names of the QRS uh, resources might be different. Mm -hmm. And you, if you want to use these Anaconda modules, you need to uh, uh, you load the FC, FCCI common module. Like this. Yeah. Uh, and FCCI. who knows, we might have to be waiting a little while for this yeah. to run. But, but yeah, I guess the most, the, yeah. Yeah, the most important thing here is there's really not that much difference other than requesting it with Slurm this way. And it's a question of how does the code itself work? Hmm. We're talking about the monitoring of the GPUs. I guess I need to wait yeah. for this to get done. Yeah, like I've been testing out this better monitoring script that people could use, but it's not yet production ready. Hopefully during the summer I can fin finalize it. That basically would give you a bit more output. And and also this these, uh, system that we have in Alto, it might not be in other other uh, clusters. Uh, but so, so many GPU frameworks, they have their own like GPU monitoring tools. But you can also like just like when the job is running, you can you're allowed to SSH to the node, and you put, and there you can, for example, look with the S Nvidia SMR, SMI, SMI, <laughs> uh, how the job is performing, uh, or in in here in Alto, this uh, our GPU jobs record this GPU utilization uh, that you can then access with the this exact mm -hmm. command. But uh, we'll, we are currently working on a better monitoring script that you could use to get this monitoring information. It's, it's, a, it's a bit hard. Uh, like in, in the future, it will be better, but currently it's a bit tricky. Yeah. So there's a, there's a question of why GPUs versus CPUs on the chat. So GPUs are very, very good at specialized calculations, such as uh, like uh, like matrix calculations, and, and basically all of the deep learning stuff uh, that you have nowadays. Uh, what what is really hip uh, is is basically like big matrix calculations in a row, uh, like it's calculating matrices over and over again and doing operations on them. And GPUs are very fast when they have this kind of a workflow. So in specialized workflows and specialized algorithms, GPUs can be much faster than CPUs. So quite often you have like, like CPUs are like central processing units, so they are generic. They can run whatever code you want there. But GPUs usually they, they are good only when you're running like code that is optimized for the GPU and it, it utilizes the structure of the GPU. GPU basically is like a bunch of single CPUs, like thousands mm -hmm. of these CUDA cores inside there. So that, that can do like simple calculations. And and like you usually like if you have a problem that can be like that is easy to or that can be parallelized with GPUs, uh, they are like algorithms for those and those like run very fast on the GPUs, but it's, yeah. it's much harder to code for them because they are not like, uh, they're not generic. They're not, 
uh, they are meant for like this specific uh, kinds of calculations. Yeah. What about this data input and output stuff? Yeah, that's that's uh, one of the things that might surprise people when they first start using GPUs in Triton, for example. So in your own machine, you might have like data, let's say you just download some reference data set, uh, like, a, um, uh, like a ImageNet or, or MNIST or something. Well, MNIST is really small, but CIFAR or something like, like some of these popular image data sets and, and you run some program against these on a GPU in the cluster. And you notice that, okay, it's not that much faster than than on my own computer. What is the problem? Like, why, why does it seem slow? And the problem usually is that like these C GPUs are so fast that they are not necessarily fully utilized if the data isn't there for them. So nowadays we're talking like big data is commonplace everywhere so you might have data sets of hundreds of gigabytes and stuff like that and the gpus if you're running some of these specialized algorithms like machine learning and stuff like that on the gpus it can be very hard to utilize the gpu because it needs so much data and if the data needs to come all the way from uh, our uh, lustre storage which is fast but it's far away like it needs to travel through network it needs network it needs to get both the CPU and the CPU needs to feed the data to the a GPU. It's it's a very long uh, way away, uh, and that might mean that the GPU is like idling while this is happening, and and that is uh, while why all of the GPU nodes that we have they have local storage there. So you suppose like if you want your code to run faster, it's usually best best idea to pack up your data into some sort of uh, like a binary format or something like that or a container like like if you do analysis on images you might want to pack your images into video file so that mm -hmm. because that's a good format to analyze uh, images out of uh, it depends it's very like don't don't choose one format or use it really depends on what kind of algorithm you're running but there are plenty of these like uh formats that are utilized for this uh, and they're very like usually you need to choose the correct format for your case but best idea is to like have the data set in some good format copy it to the local disk before you start the pro like the uh, running stuff on the gpus and then uh, utilize the gpus from the local disk because that's yeah. near near and fast to the like the, they are fast nvme disks uh, yeah. right next to the gpus basically they don't have to get data from the Lustre system through the network drive. Yeah. So it's, it's much faster to take it locally. And yeah. sometimes even these uh, GPU jobs can cause problems for the file system. So yeah. uh, <laughs> if they are very hungry for like individual files, especially like, let's say the ImageNet data yeah. set comes like 1.2, 1.4 million images uh, that are very small images. And if somebody wants to like every epoch uh, in in a email, like a machine learning training, you want to go through all of these files. So you might need to do like uh, hundred thousand epochs. So so you might read billions of files. Yeah. During one training process, so it's much better to have it in the local disk so that it doesn't bother other users as well. Yeah. There's instructions here uh, on and also links to the instructions how to use the local disks. Yeah. I think we could uh, respond to some of the Oh, questions. look at this, look at this. The TensorFlow yeah, okay, thing yeah. ran. Okay. Yeah, okay. So now it's running the, the GPU code. Yeah, yeah. we... The GPU nodes, some of them are undergoing update, like, right now. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that's why there was yeah. a bit of a hiccup there. So, basically, <laughs> uh, do you want to try to run it again? Maybe we can get it through again. Try, try again. Yeah, just like from, this. Come on. So, well, do I need yeah. to run it multiple times? No, that's fine. But yeah, should we look at the history from it? So look at the checking the yeah, GPU that's, performance. Yeah, let's. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me go back to the GPU. Um, just a minute. Yeah, there's there's quick. Good questions in the in the HackMD. So, uh, 
So why are there so many software packages uh, uh, in high level languages uh, and not software packages based on low level languages for GPUs? Well, the thing is that like uh, it's usually a lot of work to do work with them. Like they, like let's say the CUDA libraries, they are available in low level languages like C and, mm -hmm. and Fortran. You can call, I think you can call them in Fortran as well, like with the C extensions. But, uh, but basically the thing is that like it's it's so much work to write the code. Like people don't want to write the code. It's usually better to just like write a wrapper around the, mm -hmm. let's say the Kublas library call and then just like uh, call it from Python. So it's it's much easier to then do other stuff as well. So, but you can like CSC has courses on, uh, for example, on TP programming if you want to do like low level stuff, CUDA stuff. Yeah. So we use this, and the job ID is this. So this is actually in the Slurm accounting database. It has, well, someone, was it Simo or uh, Miko, Miko mainly wrote this. who's added an extra thing that puts a comment here. So it puts in the comment field the GPU stat. So memory, I'll do it power. Uh, is this like the power uses, joules or uh, kilowatt hours or watts watts. hours? Watts. Yeah. Number of CPUs requested, number of GPUs requested, and relative GPU efficiency, which was 23%. Yeah, this is, uh, like, I think this is pulled every minute or something or half a minute, and, and then average mm -hmm. after the job, when the job finishes. So this is Triton specific, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll try to make a better monitoring also for other sites mm -hmm. soonish, hopefully. Uh, but uh, what you can notice already from here is that like this small like let's say in this example that doesn't utilize the GPUs uh, that heavily. Mm -hmm. So the GPUs are like like what is this like child's game like like they don't <laughs> even sweat when when you put these kind of like normal examples to it. So uh, you really need to usually either have a big model, uh, lots of, lots of like data. Uh, and lots of utilization to get the CPUs to fully be fully utilized. Yeah. 